Welcome, brothers and sisters. I want to do a short study on Ezekiel 38, and more importantly, I want to concentrate this study on what is meant by dwell safely and what is meant by long been desolate. So if you're a little bit familiar with Ezekiel chapter 38, those two phrases are probably coming to, to mind, to memory. Um, why are we going to talk about Ezekiel 38 today? Because everyone else who teaches Bible prophecy is. You've probably noticed if you're someone who searches YouTube, for example, looking for Bible prophecies, last days teachings, you've probably noticed because uh, the leaders of Russia, Turkey, and Iran, Putin, Erdogan, and can't remember the gentleman over in Iran, but because they have gotten together lately and had some serious powwows about more than just financial things, um, people are starting to wonder, hey, is it possible that this Ezekiel 38 attack in the last days on Israel and others, is it possible it can happen soon? So a lot of people are, are hurrying up and making uh, teaching videos about it. But I haven't heard one yet get it right. I haven't listened to that many, but I've listened to several uh, channels that you're probably very familiar with. And they're, they're missing something, a couple things that's real important that's causing them to go astray. Okay, I know that sounds pretty prideful of me, but I, all I know to do is share with you what the Lord has has showed me and what I've learned in the Word. That's all you can do. I don't, I'm not trying to belittle anyone else's channel. I'm just saying that we're getting close, we gotta get it right, okay? So, Ezekiel 38. Where people are going wrong, and I'm going to give you more evidence than you want, and I'm going to prove what I say, where people are going wrong with Ezekiel 38 right off the bat, is they think the whole chapter is talking about a specific time. In other words, verse 1 is talking about the same time as verse 10, as verse 15, as verse 20. All the verses are talking about the same time, and that's throwing them off. The Lord's getting a little bit, little bit more creative than that within Ezekiel 38, and I'm going to prove it to you using the study of dwell safely and utter destruction, which will help you make sense of long been desolate. You'll see what I mean. Please stay with me. You'll never wonder about uh, what city Gog will come forth from, what's going on in Ezekiel 38. Is it pre-millennium, post-millennium? Is parts of it pre-millennium, parts of it post-millennium? You'll never wonder again. Go no further. Please stay with me. It'll be worth your time. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn to Ezekiel 38 in your Bibles, but we're, before we read the whole chapter 38, I want you to look, key in on one verse, and then we're going to study that verse for a few minutes, 10 or 15 minutes. I've got a lot of evidence for you, so you'll know what that phrase means. It's really going to help you. Okay, bear with me in this 10 or 15 minute study of this phrase. Then we'll go back and now you'll be able to section Ezekiel 38 uh, the way it's supposed to be. You'll see what I mean. All right, Ezekiel 38. Go ahead and let's take a look at verse 8. Ezekiel 38 verse 8. I'll read the whole verse. After many days, you will be visited. In the latter years, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. Brothers and sisters, 98% from what I'm seeing of all Bible teachers and scholars, who, people who teach on the last days, they'll say, oh yeah, from 70 AD to 1948, 
Israel was desolate. And that's what's meant by long been desolate. And they'll say Israel is now dwelling safely. Uh, there's always a threat of war, but, you know, they don't have bars on their windows and they live in relative peace. And people will tell you that that has nothing to do with post-millennium. Don't forget what happens after the thousand year reign of Christ. Remember Revelation 20 verses uh, 7 through 9, talking about another Assyrian referred to as Gog, but his real name won't be Gog, just like the Gog that's getting ready to show up on the scene now, before the millennium, right? The end of this age. His name isn't going to be Gog either, but it'll be an Assyrian leader. Right? And the Bible calls him Gog of Magog again. So, Revelation 20, verses 7 through 9, tells us what's going to happen after the millennium. The question now is, within Ezekiel 38, does any of those passages, does any of those verses have anything to do with Revelation 20's Gog? Or are all the verses in Ezekiel 38 all about uh, the day of the Lord of hosts and what happens when Jesus comes? Okay. Or, you see what I'm saying? Or is certain verses about Revelation 20's Gog and some verses within Ezekiel 38 about the Gog that's getting ready to come onto the scene? Do not try to understand it. Do not try to teach it unless you understand the study of the phrase dwell safely in verse 8 okay let's read that again after many days you will be visited in the latter years you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel which had long been desolate they were brought out of the nations and now all of them dwell safely Okay, now let's start the study of dwell safely in regards to the last days. Got a lot of verses for you that's going to prove what the Lord is talking about. In fact, just uh, one of the last ones we'll get to is only like three or four chapters before this one. And it tells you the timing of humanity when Israel will dwell safely. It's in Ezekiel, it's just a few chapters before this. But I have many other passages in the Old Testament that's going to tell you exactly what your beloved means when he says, now all of them dwell safely. Okay, in regards to, are we talking about, um, you know, the millennium? Are we talking about now? Okay, so let's start our study of dwell safely and it will talk about utter destruction of Israel and it will also show what's meant by long been desolate the first one we want to go to some of these are better than others in regards to making it really easy to ascertain what timing are we talking about let's start with 3312 Deuteronomy 3312 the study of dwell safely which you got to do if you're going to break a down Ezekiel 38 correctly. Deuteronomy 33, 12. O oh, Benjamin, he said, the beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him who shelters him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. This is talking about the millennium. Okay? dwelling safely during the millennium when the Lord dwells in their midst. But I have many more passages that will prove it to you. Okay, I wanted to start with Deuteronomy 33.12. Now, let's go on over to Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26, first six verses. You shall not make idols for yourselves, neither a carved image nor a sacred pillar. 
shall you rear up for yourselves, nor shall you set up an engraved stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them, then I will give you rain in its season. The land shall yield its produce and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shall last till the time of vintage and the vintage shall last till the time of sowing. You shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. And you might say, well, that's a promise that was made to Israel as part of the covenant promise. You're exactly right. But, but Israel has experienced a few good kings and had a little bit of time of safety and, and, and peace, but that's not what that's talking about. Israel won't actually achieve that until the dross and the alloy has been purged from current day Israel during the coming day of the Lord of hosts. And then when their power is gone, they shall acknowledge their offense to the Lord, and that remnant of Israel will finally meet that requirement. I have many more verses that will prove what's the timing, what's meant by the phrase dwell safely. And you're going to see it is referring to the time of the millennium. you got to know that because you will not get uh, your commentary correct, your understanding of Ezekiel 38. You won't get it correct without knowing that that passage in the center of Ezekiel 38 is now jumping to Revelation 20, verses 7 and 8. The Gog at the end of the millennium. I have many more verses for you. Now we're leaving Leviticus 26, and let's go to Proverbs 1, 33. Very interesting that we're going to verse 33, and we were... We started out in Deuteronomy 33. Now this is Proverbs 1.33. The Lord loves his numbering. Proverbs 1.33. Okay. Here we go. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. Again, you might say, well, that's not necessarily proving that dwell safely always means the Lord dwelling in their midst during the millennium. Okay, We've got even more verses that are better and will uh, make, make the point better. Okay, now let's go to... Uh, Jeremiah 23, 6. Got to love the threes and sixes here. Jeremiah 23, 6. All right. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now this is his name by which he will be called the Lord our Righteousness. And you keep reading, therefore, behold, the days are coming. So that is about the millennium. That verse there makes it a little bit more obvious that we're talking about the millennial reign of Christ when he dwells in Israel's midst, the remnant of Israel. And they are dwelling safely and securely, again, because he's dwelling in their midst during the millennium. So that made it a little bit more obvious. Let's go to... Jeremiah 33, 16. I love it how all the numbers are matching. Jeremiah 33, 16. In those days, Judah will be saved. I just read that, didn't I? Uh, let's go to, turn the page back one. Go to Jeremiah 23, 6. Let's see, I read that, I read that. What about Jeremiah 30? Jeremiah, sorry, Jeremiah 32, 37. Jeremiah 32, 
37. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries where I have driven them in my anger, in my fury, and in great wrath. I will bring them back to this place and will cause them to dwell safely. Brothers and sisters, it can't get much plainer than these last couple passages. We're talking about the gathering of Israel, the remnant from the nations, during the early days of the millennium. Okay? And again, I'm going through all of this to prove to you that to dwell safely in Ezekiel 38 is talking about the millennium. And the long been desolate in the, that same passage is not talking about 70 AD to 1948. It's talking about after the wrath of God is poured out on his own people as, as well as the world, right? The wrath of the Lord of hosts, the wrath of the face of him who sits on the throne, right? Two to three years of that before Jesus comes and administers the wrath of the Lamb on everyone else. Um, Israel is going to look like Ukraine. The world is going to look like Ukraine, for the most part. Oh, there will probably be pockets here and there of Christians that, that uh, uh, were blessed and their communities didn't have it too hard. But most of the world is going to look like Ukraine. Israel especially is going to look like Ukraine. Don't forget, when Jesus comes, it will be the worst worldwide earthquake of all time. So picture Ukraine, Jesus comes, and then it's all leveled, making it easier for the bulldozers to clean up. What's my point? We're going to read about Israel, getting, Israel going through utter destruction during the day of the Lord of hosts. So when you read Long Been Desolate in Ezekiel 38, it's talking about Israel being utterly destroyed, not one stone left upon another. And you might say, yeah, but when Jesus comes back, things are going to get cleaned up quick. He might even pull the eye, dream of genie, blink, and wow, it's paradise. No, that's not what the Bible tells us. He could do that. Of course, he can do anything, but he's not going to. People, humans, mortals are going to, who remain alive, are going to have to clean this mess up, are going to have to rebuild Jerusalem, rebuild the cities of Israel, rebuild their own countries. There's going to be the enemies of Israel, the remnant of them, who are unmarked, probably women and children, are going to be uh, possessed by Israel and doing a lot of the cleanup. And then you're going to have the ten kings who turn against the beast. They're going to be bringing their bulldozers and cranes. But it's going to be, as you can see from Ezekiel 38's phrase, long been desolate, it's going to be a while before Jerusalem looks presentable. And you might say, how can that be? Jesus will be here. Yes. I hear what you're saying. It is a little bit of, of surprise. But let's keep going with this study of dwell safely, and you'll see that long been desolate is not talking about the last you know, almost 2,000 years. It's talking about the years, the early years of the millennium. It is. Keep watching. Don't listen to me. Listen to the words of God. Uh, okay, Ezekiel 28, 26. Remember I told you before Ezekiel 38, there's going to be some chapters that... that uh, that make it really clear what the dwell safely of Ezekiel 38 means. So we're going to be now in Ezekiel 28 and Ezekiel 34. Uh, let's start with Ezekiel 28. Again, the beauty of these next few verses is they're actually in Ezekiel. So let Ezekiel and the Lord tell you uh, what's meant by dwell safely in Ezekiel 38. All right, Ezekiel 28, verse 26. Same numbering, you got to love it. Here we go. 
and they will dwell safely there, build houses and plant vineyards. Yes, they will dwell securely when I execute judgments on all those around them who despise them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord God. That is talking about Jesus is now here. He's fighting the battle of the great day of God Almighty like the days of Midian. And he's bringing the wrath of the Lamb against Israel's enemies, who happens to be Jesus, the Messiah's enemies. Okay, and there's that dwell securely and safely. Okay, this is in Ezekiel. He's telling you what he means when well, the Lord is telling you what he means in Ezekiel 38, dwell safely. We're talking about the early days of the millennium during the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Not during the last 2,000 years. Israel's not dwelling safely now. That's talking about the millennium after Jesus is here and fights and defends Israel. And then makes the, uh, the enemies of Israel bring the Israeli slaves and treat them like, like royalty. And, and by the way, don't think you're returning back to your country because now you're working for us. If this is all new to you, I'm sorry. You got to read the word. Let's go to Ezekiel 34. Now we're just four chapters before Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 34, 25. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm not trying to act prideful and, and say, you know, nice positive things about my teaching and my channel. But you've got to admit, you don't get this level of detail when you go to most uh, Bible prophecy channels. You just don't. I wish. I wish you did. But they spend all their time in their presentation, which it'd be nice if I spent a little bit more time in my presentation and my delivery. But does that really matter? You know, you can watch them for 20 minutes and just be in awe of their graphics. But yet they don't give you the correct commentary for Ezekiel 38. In fact, they'll make it sound like the Ezekiel 38 war could happen tomorrow. And that is not biblical, brothers and sisters. Do you realize that? The Ezekiel 38 war is what happens when Jesus opens the 6th and 7th seals. Back to back, boom, now the scroll is open on the table and Father begins to perform the intents of his heart. Determined desolations, right? You have five seals of the scroll that have to be opened before the Ezekiel 38 war can even begin. Now, I'm not saying Israel won't be in conflicts and they won't experience damage like you read about in uh, Daniel 11, 24 through 28, for example. But I'm saying this war, Ezekiel 38's war, cannot come until seals 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I mean, the two witnesses are here before the day of the Lord begins. The false prophet is here before. The abomination of desolation event happened before. The seven-year peace agreement that allows Israel to survey the Temple Mount happens years before the Ezekiel 38 war. So, are we seeing in these early meetings between Russia and Turkey and Iran, are we seeing like the start of a 10-king alliance that will trample Right? Like a beast, many nations, and then the little horn will come up from among them. So we've got a few years left, brothers and sisters. Uh, now, it's the Ten King Alliance could be here within a year, within two years, within three years. Okay? But Ezekiel 38, war attack on Israel at when Gog is acting like a rod of anger, right? Being used and yielded by father himself against his own people, that won't happen for uh, several years after the peace agreement is even signed. Okay, so continuing on with this study of dwell safely. And again, we're just now we're just four chapters ahead of Ezekiel 38. Uh, now, Ezekiel 34, verse 25 and 28. Here we go. Ezekiel 34, 25, 
We'll just read 25 through 28. How's that? There we go. I will make a covenant of peace with them and cause wild beasts to cease from the land, and they will dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing, and I will cause showers to come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessing. Then the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase. They shall be safe in the land, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them from the hand of those who enslaved them. And they shall no longer be a prey for the nations, nor shall beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and no one shall make them afraid. And that means forever. It is exactly what you read in certain sections of Ezekiel 38. Uh, one more. This will be the last one. This will be the last one. This is Zechariah 14, verse 11. And it is the match to Ezekiel 38, 11. Zechariah 14, 11. You're probably somewhat familiar with Zechariah 14. Everyone agrees it's the coming of Jesus the fighting of the battle of the great day of God Almighty, the early days of the millennium. Zechariah 14, 11. I about fell out of my chair when I read this one yesterday, brothers and sisters. I mean, I did this study a few, I don't know, two or three years ago I did this study, but I had forgotten about either forgotten or didn't realize it, that Zechariah 14.11 is Ezekiel 38.11. And uh, here we go. The people shall dwell in it, and no longer shall there be utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Utter destruction. That's that utter destruction that comes when God is judging Israel at the end of this age. That's why she's going to be Long been desolate. Okay. Uh, there it is. So now let's go back to Ezekiel 38. And let's do a commentary on Ezekiel 38. And I'll try to pick up the pace. But whether you realize it or not, now that you have the foundation of the study of dwell safely, when you get to, to verse 8, you're going to see Father shift time periods. You're going to see 1 through 8a is in the latter days, and that's talking about uh, the end of the age. Then you're going to see between 8b and 16a, now we're talking about in the latter years, and we can now prove to anyone who asks us we now can prove, because we have the foundation of the study of dwell safely, now we realize that in when Father switches to in the latter years, he's talking about Israel dwelling safely during the millennium. It took many years to start building back. But guess who Father's going to turn loose on, on mankind at the end of the millennium? Another Assyrian. So he can gather, he can talk lies, right? Satan's going to be re released from prison and uh, rally this uh, another Assyrian. And this Assyrian is going to go out and see who he can uh, recruit, right? What wicked people can he recruit to throughout the world to come against Israel one last time before we go into eternity? Okay, so yes, 8B to 16A is in the latter years. That's talking about Gog being released at the end of the millennium. But the rest of Ezekiel 38 is our generation, this age of Satan. All right, this is, that's what's about to go down on planet Earth when the scroll is opened. I say about to go down, it can't happen tomorrow. We haven't even had the opening of the first seal yet. All right, so we're at least a few years away. First, you're going to see the ten kings trampling before you ever see Gog. All right? Don't confuse ten kings trampling with Ezekiel 38 war. Oh, no. Ezekiel 38 war, that's during the day of the Lord of hosts. 
Here we go. Verse 1, Ezekiel 38. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, Tubal, and the prophecy against him. All right, brothers and sisters, I'm getting ready. In case you're new to this channel, I'm getting ready to show you uh, the value of coming and listening to an idiot like me. There's a little bit of value in it. Okay, instead of going somewhere else and getting the great presentations, I'm going to show you in the Word of God the exact, not just country, the exact city where Magog is. Okay? I hope I don't sound prideful. I probably do. But I've been working so hard to try to say, ooh, 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 hello. Whoever will listen, listen to me. I found it. I found the verse. Ooh, ooh. I know where Magog is. And nobody will listen to me. All right? So, here we go. Uh, turn to Nahum. Turn to Nahum chapter 1. Then we'll go back to Ezekiel 38. I know I have to pick up the pace. Sometimes I forget where Nahum is. Let's go to Nahum. If you get there, yell. Amos, Jonah, Micah. There's Nahum. Okay, Nahum 1 tells you the city where Gog shall come forth from at the end of this age. Actually, at the first seal. At the first seal, he shall be crowned, and he shall rise and take over the caliphate kingdom. And verse 11 tells you that it is the city that this chapter is about, ancient Nineveh, Assyria, and it's Mosul. Mosul, Iraq, just like al-Baghdadi. But that's not me saying it. It's Nahum 111. The first of all, what's the chapter about? Well, read verse 1. The burden against Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkishite. When it says burden, it's talking about um, all of the wickedness that Nineveh has done against his people over the centuries father remembers and at the end of the age when he's uh, dishing out his wrath of the face of him who sits on the throne and the determined desolations uh, when Jesus comes okay that's what this is about Jesus coming on the last day and rendering judgment on Nineveh okay that's what Nahum 1 is about read the whole chapter for yourself the last two verses prove that I'm right okay I'll just throw that out there I got to pick up the pace on Ezekiel 38 or we'd read the whole thing. But verse 11 says this about Nineveh. From you comes forth the one who plots evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. So even though it's about the seventh bowl uh, judgment of Nineveh, which is Mosul, Iraq today. Now, I hope you're listening. Do you realize that Mosul, uh, Muslims... In the Islamic world, they don't call it Mosul. They call it Al-Mazil or Al-Mazul. Ma, M-A-W-S-I-L, Al-Mazil. There's where you get the Ma, Gog of Ma, Mazil, ancient Nineveh. Okay? And the last two verses, i got to show you this, of Nahum 1, proves that I'm right. The Lord has given a command concerning you. That command actually goes out at the seventh trumpet, just so you know. Your name shall be perpetuated no longer. Out of the house of your gods I will cut off the carved image and the molded image, and I will dig your grave, for you are vile. The Lord is going to dig Gog's grave. You see it spoken of in Isaiah 14, the one that will be possessed by Lucifer. And in Daniel 11, verse 21, Gog is called the vile one. Just so you know, but watch what the next verse says. Nahum 115. Behold on the mountains the feet of him who brings good tidings, who proclaims peace. O Judah, keep your appointed feast and perform your vows. So many Christians don't want to admit that Israel is going to be doing that during the millennium when Jesus dwells in their midst in the new millennial temple they don't want they don't get that 
They don't understand that. And they tried to say Nahum 1 has nothing to do with the end or the millennium. Oh, it does. Perform your vows. For the wicked one, Gog, shall no more pass through you. He is utterly cut off. Okay. That vial one of Daniel 11, 21 will be cut off in Daniel 11, 45. And no longer will no more pass through you. That's in reference to Daniel 11's appointed time of the end, verses 40 through 45, when Gog passes through Israel and Judah. Right? He's passing through, but he no he won't, and no other one will pass through. Not even Gog of Revelation 20, verses 7 through 9. That Assyrian Gog, that's not his real name, he won't pass through. He'll try to assault the holy hill, right? But he will be stopped in his tracks. He won't pass through. So no more, no more will any Antichrist ever pass through, and that's the appointed time of the end pass through. So, brothers and sisters, whether you realize it or not, I have just proved to you what city the vile one of Daniel 11, 21 will come forth from in verse 21 of Daniel 11, and it is Nineveh, Al-Mazil, Magog. And don't forget, the Bible makes it clear that the final Antichrist will be an Assyrian. Those verses are Micah 5.5, 5, Isaiah 14.25, Isaiah 10.5, okay? Not to mention Isaiah 7 and Isaiah 8 and many other places. He will be an Assyrian. Back to Ezekiel 38. We finally get to Ezekiel 38. Sorry it's taking so long. I'll try to pick up the pace. But i got to give you a good foundation. But uh, if I was in your shoes and didn't know about Al-Mazil being Magog, I would say, Brother Wade, you just take as long as you want because you're feeding me. I hope a lot of you are thinking that and saying that. Dishing out the meat today. All right, verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog of the land of Al-Mazil. Right, Mosul, just like Al-Baghdadi. The prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. Now, if you're focused on waiting on me to tell you exactly where Meshach and Tubal and Rosh, where they're at today, does it matter? Does it matter? It's Assyria of old, but whether Rosh means Georgia or Rosh means Moscow or Meshach, Tubal, Togomar, Gomer, most of those, if not all those, are Turkey, right? Does it really matter? We're talking about Assyria led by the Assyrian, okay? So, and if any of those uh, countries or Say Putin, for example. If he's not Rosh, he'll probably be one of the ten kings. So it doesn't really matter. What matters is you know where Magog is. Okay, and you know what verses are this age and what verses are the end of the millennium. That's what really matters. Not worrying about where, whether Gomer is Germany or is it Izmir or is it Adana, Turkey. Does it matter? Um, remember, this is an Assyrian. This is a fourth kingdom in Persia. And I'm not saying countries like Germany won't be involved. Their roles will probably be more like maybe 10 kings, if at all. But uh, let's keep reading. Verse 3, And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks into your jaws, and lead you out with all your army, horses and horsemen, all splendidly clothed, a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all its troops, the house of Togomar, from the far north, and all its troops. And that probably means areas like Batman and Diyarbakir, you know, southeast Turkey. But I don't know for sure, but it's an Assyrian caliphate. Prepare yourself and be ready, you and all your companies that are gathered about you, and be on guard for them. That be on guard for them, if you're familiar with Psalm 83, 
That's Psalm 83. The Assyrian shall be uh, shall help and guard the children of Lot. Okay, Psalm 83 is the same war at the sixth seal as Ezekiel 38. You're supposed to add the countries together. But Assyria is mentioned in Psalm 83. In other words, all of these nations are going to help and guard the children of Lot, Israel's direct neighbors, who make crafty counsel against her, Syria, Lebanon, and Jordan and such. Okay, So you put them all together, that's who's coming against Israel at the sixth seal. Uh, now, verse 8. Verse 8a is still talking about this age. After many days, you will be visited. Okay. When do they get visited? Well, the presence of the Lord comes to earth at the sixth seal. Joel 2.10. And then Father returns to his place until waiting on Israel to acknowledge their offense after their power is gone. Hosea 5 verses 14 and 15. And then the presence of the Lord comes back to Israel again at the seventh bowl. But this time he brings his son Jesus. At the sixth seal, the presence of the Lord, when he visits Gog, um, Joel 2.10, for example, Zephaniah 1.7, uh, no one can see the Lord, but there'll be the earth and will be shaken and the heavens will be shaking, right? As Gog is attacking and passing through Israel. But he'll return to his place. And then at the seventh bowl, Ezekiel 38, verse 20, we'll get to in a second, along with Joel 3, 15, that's the presence of the Lord, but this time he brings Jesus, and, we, and people will be able to look up when, who are in the mountains and valleys of Israel, and Armageddon, and Jehoshaphat, and look up and see the glory of the Lord when Jesus comes sitting to the right hand of the power. Hallelujah. Got a fly visiting me. Uh, he likes the Word of God, thinks it's tasty. Brothers and sisters, don't let this fly distract you. Here's why you came. 8B. 8B is not talking about in the latter days or after many days. Now we're talking about in the latter years. This is where Ezekiel 38 shifts. Are you with me? To the end of the millennium, and it talks about the millennium. Watch. In the latter years, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel. That's a seventh bowl event. That's the early days of the millennium. Keep reading. Now, people go, no, no, no. That's what's been happening since 1948. People coming back to the land. That's not what that's talking about. Don't forget the study we just did on Dwell Safely. Don't forget about dwell safely in Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel, I can't remember the other one, 26, I think. Keep reading, watch. Right? Long, okay. In the latter years you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. Do you see where you can go wrong if you didn't have the study of dwell safely and didn't know what it means four chapters earlier? You didn't know what it meant in Zechariah 14, 11 and all those other passages we went to? If you didn't know what dwell safely means here, you would get it wrong. And I did get it wrong for a few years until I did the study of dwell safely. Hallelujah. Okay, and you're going to see where it transitions back to our time. Watch. Verse 9, you will ascend, coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. That's Revelation 20, 7 through 9. It hasn't transitioned back yet. And you might say, but it's not the same person then. You're right. It's an Assyrian the Bible's not going to give you the two men's, the two Gogs, the two men's real first name and last name. The Bible's just going to call him Gog, right? Leader of Assyria. Kind of like king of Assyria, except it's a, calif a cruel caliphate, so, you know, it's, 
He doesn't, uh, how does Daniel 11 word it? The honor of royalty, doesn't have the honor of royalty. Gog, the Assyrian. The black flag, folks. Verse, uh, so verse 9 is 7 through 9 of Revelation 20. Got it? Let's keep reading. We're still in Revelation 20 now. Verses 7 through 9. Verse 10 here in Ezekiel 38, Thus saith the Lord God, On that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will make an evil plan. Right? Because of the study of dwell safely, we know that this is actually talking about Revelation 20. Okay? Uh, Thus saith the Lord God, On that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. That hasn't happened yet. That's talking about the millennium. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. That's the millennium. To take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited. See, this is the second reference in Ezekiel 38 to how bad Israel, the Middle East, and the world what shape they're going to be in after the completion of the day of the Lord of hosts, both phases, to include the battle of the great day of God Almighty. That's how bad it's going to be, right? Like Ukraine, but worse. Um, verse 12. Uh, to take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited and a against people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods who dwell in the midst of the land. Verse 13, we're still talking about Revelation 20's Gog. Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, Tarsus, Syria, and all their young lions will say to you, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder? Verse 14, therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, this is not Gog of this age. This is Gog of Revelation 20. You're going to see it transition. Okay, right now we're still in the latter years. Don't forget your study of dwell safely. Verse 14, therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog of Revelation 20, Thus saith the Lord God, on that day when my people Israel dwell safely, will you not know it? Then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. Okay. Now that was all, from 8b to 16a was all about Gog of Revelation 20 in the latter years, right? While Israel is dwelling safely with the Lord dwelling in their midst. You can't say we didn't read all of those passages about dwell safely to include the one four chapters before this chapter. But in 16b, brothers and sisters, we are now going to switch back to this age, pre-millennium. Now he says... 16b, it will be in the latter days, not the latter years, in the latter days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you, O Gog, before their eyes. And from there to the rest of the chapter is all about this age. Except the conclusion to the 70th week of Daniel, you could say a lot of people call it the second half to the 70th week of Daniel. We're running out of time, brothers and sisters, so I'm not going to uh, be able to read the rest of this for you. You can read it on your own. All right, from here on, from 16 B on, we're back to this age. And it's all, the rest of Ezekiel 38 is all about now, okay? The, the conclusion to the day of the Lord of hosts. Um, the wrath of the Lamb, the battle of the great day of God Almighty. You even see Jesus coming in verse 22 and... Uh, Flooding rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone. That's a combination of 2 Thessalonians 1, Revelation 16, 17 through 21. Um, so, don't think it too strange that the Lord does that in this chapter. Talks about one time period for part of the chapter. 
then talks about another time period in another part of the chapter. He does that all the way through the major and minor prophets. From Isaiah to Malachi, it's just like that. The Lord bounces around and people get a little confused, you know, and, and then there's dual, dual fulfillments. So people get a little confused. But don't think the Lord hasn't done that a lot. 1 through 8a is in the latter days. 16b through the end of the chapter is in the latter days. But 8b through 16a, he jumps to the end of the millennium, to another Gog, another Assyrian, an evil, vile Assyrian. Satan is released for a short period of time. Why? Because Father wants to test people on the planet, the mortals, one last time before we move into eternity, the great white throne judgment and eternity, right? Father is able to identify his enemies and adversaries before the millennium, and he's going to do it at the end of the millennium. Brothers and sisters, don't doubt what you learned today about Magog and long been desolate and dwell safely. Um, and if you're a Bible prophecy teacher that's gotten it wrong, be humble. I get things wrong all the time and have to eat humble pie. Okay, this isn't a competition. We're working together. Hallelujah. To feed the flock before Satan is cast to earth. We've got to get this right. Ezekiel 38 is not getting ready to happen. You've got a minimum of four more years before it can happen. Minimum. You've got to have the first five seals before that war happens. Okay? That's how you break down Ezekiel 38, brothers and sisters. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I guess the fly is now my mascot. God bless. Take care.